This is Jocko Podcast number 120 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. So, it's been a while since Q&A. Yeah. So, we have some Q&A from the interwebs. Yeah. Go. First question, Jocko. More than once on the podcast, you've mentioned how the teams were so competitive that no one wanted to admit when they were cold. Being too, too cold puts you at a tactical disadvantage. In hindsight, was that a failure to control your ego so your ego doesn't control you? I didn't ask this question out of idle curiosity. A lot of folks on active duty listen to the podcast, and I'm concerned they might put themselves, their teammates, and their mission in jeopardy because of their egos. Won't let them admit they're too hot or too cold. All right, so good question, good point, and there's definitely a big difference between between being uncomfortably cold, right? Like un, like you're just uncomfortably cold or uncomfortably hot or uncomfortably thirsty or hungry or whatever, and being in an actual state where you're putting the mission in jeopardy because you're too cold or, or hot or thirsty or whatever. So I just needed to say this. In the teams, you are 95% of the time, you are cold, too cold, too hot, too wet, too thirsty, too miserable, something. There's no time. When you're in the field, you put on 100 pounds worth of gear, worth of gear you're uncomfortable from the word go. <laughs> from the word go. And you're cold. You know, you come in over the beach. You're in wet camis. It, it doesn't matter. You come out with great technology and we got a dry suit of this, we got a wet suit that. No, you're, you're miserable. It's not, you're going to be cold. You're going to be uncomfortable. You ride in a Zodiac. First, you, you ride in a, in a big rib, which is like a 10 meter boat. Mm -hmm. And you have your Zodiacs on that boat. Mm -hmm. So you're in that boat. You're getting sprayed with water. You're getting bounced up and down. You do that for three hours. And then you launch your little boats into the water. Well, th while you're doing that, you fall in the water. You slip. You get sprayed more. You're covered in water. By the way, the water's not warm. Mm -hmm. And then you got to... Because you're going to travel then 15 knots, so you got you're facing a 15 knot headwind for another two hours in a zodiac, and then you're going to get in the water and swim over the beach. Like you're going to be cold. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is, mm -hmm. and you can't complain about that. So, and you don't complain about it in the teams. You just keep your mouth shut. That's what you do. Keep your mouth shut. Now, the big distinction here is this is correct. If you're going to get hypothermia. Mm -hmm or you're gonna get a heat stroke, or you're gonna go down from dehydration, then yeah, you gotta speak up and be, you know, you gotta say, hey, guess what? I, I got an issue here. I'm, I'm starting my, you know, I'm starting to get dizzy, or I'm starting to get lightheaded, or whatever. Yeah, if you cross the line to where it goes from discomfort to actual problem, then you definitely need to speak up. Um, and it does happen, it, it happens a lot, actually. You know, when we, when we do our land warfare training in the desert in the summertime, it's 120 degree heat. Got you're, you're going to take heat casualties. You know, when I was running training, we used to just have premeditated heat casualty evacuation because we knew <laughs> someone was going to go down. Yeah. That's just the way it's going to happen. Because yeah. you got 40 guys that are all turning and burning, and they're all running on three or four hours of sleep, and then they're going out in the field, and they just got back from the field, and there's no time to rehydrate. You know, okay, there's time, but some guys might forget to rehydrate. Mm. And next thing you know, you got a guy going down. So the stuff does happen. And yeah, you got to let your team know what's going on. I've the, the closest call I had, I was on a long patrol, training patrol in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas. It was summertime, it was hot. We were planning to pump water, meaning you bring a little water filtration system into the field and you get to a stream and you can fill your canteens and it's great and it seems like you have water forever because there's streams. Mm. Well, we, the way the patrol went, we started off in pairs and then we linked up with fire team and then you link up with squad and then you link up with a platoon. Well, while we were in the squad link up, we, for whatever reason, the course that I was on, I didn't hit water. We had a couple of streams that were supposed to be there mm. and they weren't. Because they're intermittent streams. Oh, so yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes streams aren't running year round. Mm. And the time of year it was, the streams weren't running. So the first one, I was like, oh, okay, I'll be okay. Got to the, so you go up over a mountain, come back down the other side, get to this where the stream is marked, intermittent stream is marked on a map. Mm. Guess what? No stream. So, and then by that time, I was out of water. 
Mm. So now coming the the next day, I, I said to myself, you know, if there's not water on this next stream, I'm gonna I'm gonna have issues. <laughs> and there wasn't water the next day. So yeah, that's. But I started to feel the dehydration coming on me. That's why I hate being thirsty. I yeah. hate. I always carry as much water as I can. You you got to be paranoid about being thirsty. Once you start going down from a dehydration, it's really a bad situation. You went the whole day? No, it was two days. Dang. Yeah. And now I had water going in, but I right, didn't right. refill. I didn't have a ton of water. I should have had. I should have had one. I should have had maybe two more liters of water as a as a just in case. Dang. But I didn't. Then you got to carry. That. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, know, you got to carry it. Now you're heavier. Now you're sweating more. So there's a little balance you got to figure yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, can it be a problem? Yes, I have seen it become a problem. Where where guys' ego's too big, they don't want to admit it for yeah. sure. So yes, this is a good warning. Don't let your ego get you in real trouble because that's going to hurt your platoon even more. Mm -hmm. So don't let that happen. Don't let your ego prevent you from telling the truth about what's happening. And this happens in, this can happen in the business world too, where Oh, you know what? Oh, I, I don't really know how to operate this piece of equipment, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to try and do it. Yeah. Well, that's how someone gets hurt. Yeah. So again, that's an ego problem. When you have an issue, when you know you can't do something or you've never done something before, step up and and raise your hand. Now, of course, you should have done the research. You should have, you know, you should have figured some stuff out on your own. But if you failed to do that, don't dig the hole deeper. Yeah. Raise your hand. Say what the problem was. There you go. Good question. Yeah, makes sense. Cause that, especially the thirst thing, mm -hmm. like the dehydration thing. Yeah, you don't want to be the guy saying, "Oh, I'm thirsty." You know, but here's the thing. I think nowadays, though, mm -hmm. like teams and coaches. Here's the thing in football. Okay, so Pop Warner football, they'd be like, "Yeah, no water." You know, mm -hmm. we have a water break. You drink water at the water break. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. you're practicing. You know, kind yep. of thing. It's like a toughen you up thing. But man, that can jam your health up. Yeah, but let's face it. I mean. It would be pretty rare you, if you gave people the if you're doing a practice. What? How long does a practice last? Two hours. Two hours. Okay, bro, you can make it two hours if you're properly hydrated. Now, if a person's not properly hydrated going into the practice, sure, that can that can be a problem. Mm -hmm. But if someone is properly hydrated going into the situation, it should not be a problem. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you what: if you are in the military and you're going in the field, man, prehydrate like crazy. That used to save me so much from carrying so much water. Mm -hmm. Just drink so much water. Now I'll tell you where the problem comes in: you're in a helicopter ride for an hour and a half, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you, you got to piss so bad. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. But you know what? Bring a little, bring a little plastic bottle with you, so you can piss yeah. in the bottle. That's way less of an issue, I think. Like finding a place to drink versus fi finding oh, a place to sure. piss. Oh, for sure, it's way I'd less. Way of an rather issue. have to. Yeah. But yeah, if you prehydrate properly. No matter how hard you're working, you can go like 12 hours without any water, yeah. which is pretty legit yeah. for for you you know kind of an average SEAL mission. 12 hours gets you plenty plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. But kid, I mean, I'm talking Pop Warner here, so you know, when you're 19, <laughs> that's right. I'm, 11, no, 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 John, we're not talking uh, that. Yeah, we're talking cool. Pop Warner. <laughs> yeah, we're talking, but here's the weird thing: like when you went to high school, college, they'd have water right there, right there on the sideline. And they, you know, they're really aware of, hey, are you good? You need water? Drink more water. You well, know? I think that was also the time. Yeah, that's, so that's the, actually the point. The yeah. era. The yeah, era. The era, right? 100%. Like when we were kids, no one ever, ever, one single time in my whole, from the time I was zero until I was 18, <laughs> yeah. no one ever said to me, hey, make sure you drink water. Yeah. Never. Never yeah. heard anyone say that. Yeah. It, was, it was like, oh, you're thirsty? Drink a Coke. What? You know? Yeah. <laughs> that's just the way it was. Yep. You know, so that changed for you in that time period. Yeah. When I yeah. got to when I got to SEAL training, to when I got to BUDS, that's when they were saying, oh, you got to stay hydrated. Yeah. I thought it was kind of a joke. I thought they were <laughs> kidding at first. Yeah, no, it's Like, what are you man. talking about hydrate? You mean drink water? What do, you, what do you mean? Why would you call it something else? Hydrated. Yeah. Well, you're thirsty. Yeah. Like, it's like this. Well, you should. Because you can go down from like heat, okay, there's like, for there's heat uh, exhaustion. Heat stroke, heat, heat exhaustion. Yeah. And what heat, else is there? There's all kinds of heat injuries you can get. Yeah. And you get heat stroke, right? You can straight up die. Oh, yeah. So that's not, you know, it's not a matter of like, oh, yeah, tough it out. But you can't tough it out. You're shutting down kind nope. of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And so, you know, that is important. It's for the heat thing. And I guess the that whole is, thing too. And that's, go, you know, going back to this question, that is probably why we would see heat casualties yeah. in training. 
because guys do not want to say anything. They're like, man, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. I'm not going to get an IV. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look even worse. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what happens. You get stuck with an IV. Now you're laying in the field. Everyone else, by the way, continues on doing another 10-kilometer yeah. hump to a target. And you're sitting there laid up in the ambulance like a little baby. <laughs> no one wants that. But not, pre if you pre-hydrate yeah. properly, you won't be in that situation. Yeah. But if you are going to get that situation, you need to say something. Yeah. We're talking about your life. Yeah. Essentially. And more importantly, we're talking about the mission. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still thinking about the Pot Warner situation. But yeah, man, I dig it. <laughs> and you are correct. I can't help but agree with you 100%. Next question. Jocko. Dear Jocko. My chosen community has lost and continues to lose members due to suicide. One reason is that they don't ask for help. I think one reason they don't ask for help is that they're afraid of being or being seen as weak. I'm aware that this takes strength and discipline to be able to per perceive when you need help and to ask for it. I don't know how to convey that to them. Could you address how one can gather support from their team without losing face? Thank so you. so there's an obvious reason why I paired these two questions together because yeah. they're both very, very similar. And it's the same thing. And it, and if we don't, if a member of your team won't come forward and admit they have an issue, then the issue is not going to get addressed. And this is the same exact thing that you have to explain to your team. Like, hey, if you start going down because you're dehydrated or you start getting de, uh, getting frostbite and you need to get warmed up, you need to say something. If you don't say something, that's going to hurt the whole team. That's what's bad. So. So I think that's important. I think that's important to make sure everyone understands that this part of being a good operator is knowing your limitations and when you reach your limitations, raising your hand and saying, hey, this is a problem. And believe me, th there's, there's guys that might complain about little things and they're eventually going to be labeled as a little complainer, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't really have issues. So there, there's a fine line, right? There's a fine line. But... For this one, you know, for someone that's having some kind of mental stress, well, again, we got to recognize what's going on. We got to recognize that it's impacting us negatively at work. So that means you got to raise your hand. If it's having a negative impact on the way you're performing, then you got to raise your hand. And I think it's important to explain to people that this is something that something that happens to can happen to every, anybody, and it's not a negative thing. It's just a reality. It's. It's kind of like it reminds me of being afraid, right? And if 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 you're let's say you got a new guy that's never done anything before and he doesn't know that he's going to be afraid <laughs> going on an operation, then he's going to wonder why his stomach is upset <laughs> or why he second guess himself or why he can't sleep like, "Oh, you can't sleep." Guess what? That's normal. You're going on a, a hardcore combat operation tomorrow. The fact that you can't sleep is completely normal. The fact that you feel sick to your stomach is completely normal. The fact that you're you're, you're shaking, th those things are normal. Like you're going to feel those. That's okay. It's not that big of a deal. And those things are, are just fear. That's what they are. And if you know what they are and you know that fear is okay and it's acceptable and it's actually kind of good, right? Because if you if, if you're not feeling any fear whatsoever, then, you know, you've got some, well, you should be feeling afraid. You should, you should feel fear. That should, that should propel you. It should get you on edge. Those, all those things are actually happening for a reason. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's the same thing that you got to explain to people with stress. Like, oh, okay, that you can have too much fear. You keep someone at that heightened state for an extended period of time. Well, that's called combat stress and it's real. And it can happen, and it can happen to anyone. And you know what? How many books have we talked about on this podcast where you can see stress, combat stress, taking its toll on people? And and when it does, you know, we've talked about it many times. Pete, if you if you get to that point, you need a break. And and Dick Winters from Band of Brothers, you know, he would give those guys breaks without them even knowing that he was giving them a break. He's saying, oh, hey, Echo, you got to go back and do a little logistics run for four days. Just make sure we have more supplies coming our way. Get you off the front line. Get you a breather. So that way, again, the same metaphor I've used before is 
If you have an engine in the red and you keep running it, what's gonna happen to the engine? It's gonna burn out, it's not gonna be usable. If you have someone that's psychologically stressed and they're in the red and you keep running them in the red, guess what, eventually they're not gonna be usable anymore. Mm -hmm. So you need to give them a break, get them off the line, because if you do take an engine, if your engine light, check engine light comes on and you go and get it maintained, get it fixed, the engine's still good. If you keep running it, the engine will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So you gotta do that with your people and you gotta make sure everybody knows and I think that's a real simple metaphor to use with people as well. Say, look, we're running hard, and we're going to put some stress on the engine. And if you don't keep the engine maintained, the engine's going to break, and you won't be any good to the team. You won't be any good for the mission. So if you start feeling your engine light go on, you got to let someone know so we can give you the proper maintenance. And that's it. Jody Middick talked about that too. Jody was, you know, saying, "Hey, you know, basically, if you get injured, if you break your ankle." They don't just expect you just to keep going. No, yeah. like, okay, you need to get back and you need to do rehab. Well, the same thing can happen to your brain. Mm -hmm. Your brain gets a break in it. You don't just keep driving or it's gonna fracture and fall apart. Yeah. What do you do? You you take a break, you get downtime, and you get recovered, and then you'll be ready to rock and roll again. Yeah. So two really good questions to start it off. You know, again, especially for folks out there on the battlefield, and 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 it's not just for people on the battlefield because it happens with any any group of people that are in a stressful environment. I mean, obviously, cops g get put into a really stressful environment all the time. Well, if you need to take a breather, you need to say something before you before you burn out the engine. Yeah. Same thing with business world, right? People in the business world get extremely stressed out. Well, you probably need a break at some point. Yeah. Make sure you work that in there. Don't like, uh, like police have like a like a mandatory program or a mandatory situation where you know you go through. I, I think like when they shoot someone or something like that, like mandatory, you have to go to like some kind of like counseling or something yeah, like that. Yeah, most of them do now. Yeah, yeah. So that that makes sense too because even if let's say you don't necessarily need it or whatever, mm -hmm. right? You go through a shooting situation, you got to go mandatory and oh, I got to go through. But it's good that everyone kind of does it because it seems like... Oh, it takes away the, the negative The, the view stigma, of it. Yeah. you know, yeah, like kind of sure. like, oh, I, I'm the only guy, you know? I'm the only guy that apparently feels this way. I'm looking around, no one else is going to counseling. Yeah. And now I'm the only guy. I must be the weak guy, so I don't, I'm not yeah, going to no, say anything. Yeah, no, and they do that. They've done that somewhat in the military of, hey, when you come home from deployment, everyone's going to go talk to a talk to what is it a psychotherapist a therapist yeah, or psychology. something like yeah. psychologist they, <clears throat> they kind of do that I know they did that in the SEAL teams where they'd be everyone would go mm -hmm. uh, they didn't do it while I was in they would give you like a piece of paper to fill out which <laughs> everyone just kind of <laughs> gun decked <Yeah>. you know <laughs> gun decked. Gun what decked. does that mean yeah gun just decked. pencil whip I don't know what I don't yeah. know what, just like you know fill yeah, it yeah. out except for Tony Phone you know what Tony wrote on the, the head of his what he wrote, um, this is a cry for help. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, but anyways, that was, he filled out like a whole fake one about just a funny one. Yeah. Dang. Anyways, right. I got a kick out of it. Yeah. But it makes sense though, because of that. Because that's kind of the, the I yeah, mean, that's really the, the, the whole premise. smart way to do things. It's the smart way to do things. Let's give everyone a, let's give everyone a baseline sort of, okay, check. Here you go. Yeah. And that way no one's no one has to go no one has to take raise their hand first, right? Yeah. You're all gonna talk to somebody. I think yeah. it's a smart thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because that's kind of the thing, right? It kind of goes along with the earlier question too. Like, if it's a water break and hey guys, water break, everyone's drinking water. So now it's like you don't have to feel like, oh, the the one puss who like needs his water. Oh yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. kind of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, when it's, it's exact, like, that's it's the a, exact same thing. Yeah. Amen. So yeah, if you got an issue, man, speak up. Let everyone know. S you know that way you can do your job. You can do it longer. You can do it better. Your goal is to do the, is to be the best possible that you, uh, be the best possible capability, so that you can go out and do your job the best. If you're, if you got issues, you got to say something, yeah. so that you can keep doing your job for the team. Yeah. It's like um, like don't look at yourself as being weak. Look at yourself as trying to optimize your strength kind there you of thing. Go. You know, maybe just a flip over the way you look look at it or whatever. There it is. Next question. Do you think martial arts tournaments are the most effective way for preparing for physical confrontation? I just competed in my first, my second jujitsu tournament as a three stripe white belt. And 
in one match, I completely lost focus and control of my mind because I believe I was taken aback by the strength and wildness of my opponent. <laughs> hey man, I dig it 100%. <laughs> I, I barely I can barely even remember how my, how the match unfolded. I've given this match significant thought, and I concluded that I need to compete more. I'm very com- I'm very comfortable with everyone in my academy. I trust the guys I roll with without question. They're like family now. The guy, <clears throat> the guy in the tournament was a total stranger. He was unknown, and therefore elicited fear. I allowed myself to be to be crippled by fear. Is there any other way to overcome this beyond competing in tournaments? Thank you. All right. You know, competing is definitely part of it. And and it's interesting. That it's, he's asking if this is the most effective way to prepare for a physical confrontation. It is a very good way mm-hmm. to to help you prepare for a physical confrontation. And, and the bottom line is competing, one of the things that competing, one of the things that, that's true with competing and it's true with anything is that the more familiar you are with the unfamiliar, the more familiar it will become. I know that sounds pretty obvious, but the more familiar you are with the unfamiliar, the more familiar it will become. So you get to become familiar with things that are unfamiliar Mm -hmm. and you learn how to handle things that you aren't expecting in the teams. We always talk about like your first free fall jump when you're, when you're learning how to skydive with, Mm -hmm with a free fall rig and your first jump seems like it's it's like three seconds long even though it's a minute mm. even though it's a minute because you're just you're all amped up and you all you see is your altimeter and the more you jump the more you see until mm. that minute i mean think of have you ever had trying to hold your breath for a minute yes that that's like a long time mm. right but and that's that's the amount of time that can take up a free fall can be a nice long minute where you're observing all these different things mm. but when you first start doing it it doesn't seem very long mm. i'm sure if we had andy you know andy stump on here his 1 minute free fall price seems like a really really long time because mm. he's got thousands of of jumps and so this is the same thing the the more you train for chaos the more accustomed you're going to become to the chaos. Now, what's great is in this particular case, he's talking about this guy's just wild and crazy. And hey, if you survive it that first time, well, the next time someone goes wild and crazy, you're like, okay, well, here's what I need to do. Mm-hmm. I need to put this in check. I need to, I need to hold on. I need to make sure he, I don't give any positions, but I'm not going to get crazy. I'm just going to absorb some. You, you go through that mental drill, and the more you go through that mental drill, the better you, better you will get at it. And this is true. This is true with anything. And and that's why, you know, when I was running SEAL training, we put the, we, we would make it so we'd, we'd hit people with the most random possible things because that's what prepares you for random possible things is random possible things. Mm. That's what you want to deal with. It's kind of weird, you know, in jujitsu, Dean, Dean used to talk about this and, and now you can hear John Donahue talking about it as well. And if, if you have never been in a certain situation before, you're not ready for it. Yeah. And when, okay, so there's a there's a position in, in jiu-jitsu called 50-50, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it's called now. We used to call it Kakareko because that's the position that Dean was in when he beat a guy named Kakareko for the ADCC World Championships. And Dean, Dean calls that position 90-10 because he's been in it so much that even though it's a neutral position, meaning we both have the same advantages and disadvantages, when Dean's in that position, he's been in it so much that he's got a 90% chance. He's got a 90% chance of success because he's been there 10 times, 20 times, 30 times more than you. Mm. And I heard John Donher talking about the same thing the other day. He's getting, you know, his his jujitsu fighters right now are doing things to guys that are, they're, they're putting people in positions that the person's not used to yeah. so if you're not used to it guess what you're an advantage even though I might have trained even though let's say I'm a jiu-jitsu black belt and I've been training for 20 years if I've never been in this particular position before it's I might as well be a white belt in that position yeah. and you can see that happening you can yeah. see that happening in jiu-jitsu that's why when somebody comes up with a new new type of moves that move can be effective for, for a little while. Yeah. Like let's say let's say you came up with a new move, you might catch me in that new move one time, yeah. and then I go, oh, I, well, I know what he did. But if but now if instead of just a new move, you had a whole new area, yeah, that System. I had to learn. All, yeah, then I had had to learn a whole new 
deal around yeah. it's the same thing with eddie bravo and yeah. and 10th planet you know like mm-hmm. they they were doing things like oh i've never been in this position before now what do i do yeah and they were catching guys like that mm. And then the more people figure out that part of that system, okay, well, then you get better at it and we get to a neutral ground again. Yeah. But anytime you can, so in training, anytime you can get to be put yourself in a situation that you haven't been before, it's going to be beneficial to you. Yeah. Now, what is it, how does this translate to real physical confrontations, right? How do you train for that? Well, how often are you putting on gloves in jujitsu? How often are you having somebody punch you in the face? How often are you having somebody come up and push you around? The, how often are you having people do things that people are gonna do in a street fight, right? That people are gonna do in a street fight that they wouldn't normally do in a jujitsu match, right? For instance, in a street fight, does anyone ever start on the knees? <laughs> right? They don't start on the no, knees. No, sir, they do not. They don't. You don't start on the knees in a street fight. You don't say, hey, you want to fight me? And then you, you then you get down on your knees, and so does the other guy, and now we figure out what happens. No, yeah. street fights don't start on the knees. No. So you're almost, and, and people ask me this. Actually, somebody asked me the other day, what, what should I do when starting from the knees? What's a good takedown? I'm like, oh, pull guard. Because yeah. why are you on your knees? Yeah. The best thing to do if, if your opponent is on their knees, stand up and kick them in the face. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Because you're not going to be, if you're, you, why would you be on your knees? Yeah. So don't practice that. So how do you prepare for, the, the best way to prepare for these combat situations is, is, uh, is jiu-jitsu tournament a good way? Yes, it is a good way. Is boxing is is boxing a good way? Is it good to do a smokers? So you figure out what it's like when somebody some you want to talk about with someone going wild. <laughs> wait yep. till you get someone that's untrained in boxing come throwing throwing you know windmill haymakers at you thirty eight in a row. Yep. Now they're going to be exhausted after that first thirty two seconds. Yep. But but you will have, would have had to have withstand and not get punched in the head. Yeah. Because if you get punched in the head by a wild haymaker, I don't care who you are, if they connect with your chin, there's a possibility you might go down. Yes. So you need to be careful of that. Yeah. So so don't just think, oh, just jujitsu. Hey, go out, train some boxing, train some Muay Thai, and go and spar. And if you can, do a smokers, because smokers pretty easy to do. Yeah. In other words, you don't need to you don't need to uh, do like a full preparation camp yeah, and all that up, yeah. yeah you know it's an unofficial event yeah. so you go do a smokers and you're going to experience somebody going wild on you yeah throwing haymakers at you throwing crazy kicks at you do that do all these things to get ready for those physical confrontations and then then you also on top of that you read and you look at youtube videos go watch youtube i've talked about this before go watch youtube videos of street fights because yeah. you get to see what people what kind of things people do yeah. which which can be very Effective, right? Mm-hmm. You need to watch learn to watch out for sucker punches You need to learn to watch out watch your back and watch you sneaking up on you and be aware of your surroundings and put your back Against the wall, you know, there's all these little things that you can do to make sure that you're not going to get sucker punched mm-hmm. But you got to pay attention to those things. Yeah Yeah, that what that wildness that he talks about yeah, I like, you know, it, that is a huge thing. It's like a whole nother factor where especially and exactly how he said he's real he's real familiar with his training partners. Right. You know? So man, you, you know, the amount of cruising and kind of relaxing, even during the role, there's probably a significant amount of it, almost to the point where it seems like anyway, where he kinda maybe expects that. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, even subconsciously kinda he, he understands that that's kind of part of the deal. You go against a complete stranger yeah. and he gets wild. Then it's like, whoa, this is like, it's kind of overwhelming, you know? Yeah, and also, even at the three-stripe white belt level, this other guy, he may, he's got his little game. He's got his game that he plays. And there's a chance that as a three-stripe white belt, you haven't learned that part of the game. So it just feels crazy. Yeah. And that whole, you know, when you compete for the first, second time, you know, just uh, at those earlier. See, see that's the thing is, uh, the more you train, the less holes there are, yeah, right. Yeah. The less holes you are, there are in your game. And so, if you're a three straight white belt, you might not have good uh, guard replacement, yeah. right? Like you really haven't learned how to replace the guard from cross side. Yeah. Well, if this guy happens to be a guy that holds really well across the side, and that's where he works his game from, man, you're in big trouble. Yeah, you're in big trouble. Yeah, and it all seems so unpredictable too at those earlier stages because you don't know where your holes are. I mean, you you might know some, but you don't know. Yeah, you know, you haven't seen enough of the game, and you haven't been in enough situations where yep. you you can kind of stay calm and you know all this stuff. 
So uh, to your point where you say you got to be familiar with the unfamiliar kind of thing. Remember when Majid started just baseball bat choking yes. everyone? Yeah. That these was weird. Yeah. yeah. These little weird setups and he yeah. would let people pass his guard and he, yeah. they'd be thinking, oh, I'm about to score some this. points on yeah. them and boom, they're getting tapped out. Yeah. Right. They'll, it was so foreign that okay so he went the two real real famous ones at the time when he exploded on the scene with these was it was clark and zach yep. max so there was two matches yep. and one of them zach maxwell ha- mounted him <laughs> arm bar no has yeah, him in yeah. the arm bar meanwhile baseball ch- ball yeah. um, choke is in not but who cares because really that rule not rule but that situation kind of applies if you have someone in the arm bar i don't care you yeah, choke yeah. me up yeah, i got the arm I'm bar about to break your arm right he's going for the arm but he can't lean back because the baseball bat chokes in and he's like he got a tap yeah he got a straight up tap and then um i think he was clark where he could have been the other way around but either way Clark has a Zach was, Zach was the unlock. I was, yeah. we were at these matches, weren't we? I know I was. Yeah, no, I wasn't. I at, was there at live. A, I saw the videos. But um, yeah, the kind where Clark was like, I know this choke. I'm in mount yeah. or I'm in this good position. I know that this choke doesn't work. It simply doesn't work because I have the advent and he gets choked unconscious because yep. he doesn't tap. Sure, it might hurt. And that is the case for a lot of yeah, a lot yeah, of chokes yeah. where it's like, sure, this hurts. No, no, no. But don't even hurt. A choke. No, a good one doesn't even hurt. Yeah, it's a just good in. joke. It's just in. Yeah. The, so what we're talking about there is a, a guy named Majid. What's Majid's last Page. name? Page. Yeah, that's right. And he he came onto the scene. We'll say sure. with uh, uh, well, this is what's interesting about this is the baseball bat choke is not a new choke. Yeah, it's not a domain that people were unfamiliar with. Mm. It's just that he was doing it really, really well with really good setups that people. That's what. That's the part that people weren't expecting. Mm. It was a really good setups. They were really good setups that people weren't expecting. Yeah, and so he let people pass their guard or his guard, but he had the choke in. They'd yeah. get across side and get mounted or whatever. Go for arm locks and they're tapping. Yeah, Gosh. because they weren't expecting it. Yeah. And even in those, you know, I mean, Zach Maxwell and, and Clark Gracie, just phenomenal competitors, black belt jujitsu. I mean, been training their whole lives. Yeah. Both of them got caught by that, by yeah. Majid. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the legitimacy of like the way that whole thing went down was just so astounding. Like, just like how you said, like Clark. Yeah, Bro, Clark has been winning stuff from yeah. day one. Just same winning, with and Zach. Then, yeah, and yeah, it was, it's just crazy, but it just shows, you know, where you can you can be that good. Yeah, you get just that one teeny tiny window of unfamiliarity. Yeah, and that's you, what it the is. The guy creeps in there, yep. and he's familiar, but he'll just have his way. And then what was interesting is as people started knowing that that's what he's going to go for, but he'd still get it. Yeah, and actually, he and I trained with him before. before yeah. The, you know a few times or whatever and he didn't do that to Ah. me and i was like hey you know like what i didn't ask him why didn't he do it to me but i was like do do people you know like does everyone ask you to teach them or what he's like you know what people don't i don't even really talk about anymore because i've become so well known for that move that it becomes it became less a part of my life he said yeah i was like well it can happen too where okay now once you go okay it goes through a phase of hey i wasn't expecting that and it worked because I wasn't expecting yep. it. Then it goes like, hey, I was expecting it, but yep. it still worked. Yep. But then it gets to a point where people are just going, I'm not going to do it. You're like, I'm, oh, if he grabs yeah. my collar, I need to go yeah. in a totally different direction. I need to not do anything. Yeah. need to back out, whatever. Yeah. And then it becomes where, like you said, it's n- now it loses some of its effectiveness because everyone is expecting that to be yeah. the move that you do. That's what happened with Dean, 100%. For sure. Like yeah. where they'd be like, I don't care what position I'm in. I don't care what position. I have to give up right. and just do not get into that leg lock yep. position. Yep. It's a, and you could tell game. with some of his matches, I was like, oh, yeah, this guy doesn't <laughs> I, I get it. You know, I yeah. get it. But yeah, man, that is how it goes. But the chaos thing, I think he should compete more. Yes, That's you should it. compete more for sure. But what I'm saying is compete in jujitsu for sure, but do some smokers, do yeah. some Muay Thai, do some wrestling matches wrestling, do some sambo yeah. turn you know get out there get, yeah, do yeah. some different competitions and then on top of all that man do some scenario based training you know do some yeah. self defense based training at the academy where somebody pulls out the 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 knife the fake yeah. knife whatever what, it, what do they call the fake knife and like let's make sure we know how to deal with that let's make sure yeah. we know how to deal with a baseball bat like what are you going to do yeah. what are you going to do cuz baseball bat you know what you do with the baseball bat close the distance 
Yeah. You know, hey, that's 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 not even really a game changer yeah. as long as you know what you're doing. Knife, you close the distance with a knife, now you're getting stabbed. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So you got to make distance. Yeah. And, and it, it again, man, that just that familiarity, like once you go through it, that's like almost night and day in and of itself. Once you've seen it, if you've never seen it, versus oh, if you've seen yeah, it once, like that sure. first step is night and day. So that's good that he went through this. Really? Yeah. 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 And what's go- the other good psychologically, you know what he recognized psychologically? He recognized that he lost his mind. Right. Yeah. What he say? He said, uh, he I did fear. Yeah, I got fear. Oh, what was it? In one match, I completely lost focus and control of my mind. So once you, that's just what you just said, when you get that, when you experience that, that's a good thing to experience because then you learn to recognize yeah. that you're losing control and you're losing your mind and you're going to, when you when you realize that, it allows you to start monitoring it. Yeah. If you've never been, because there's people that are listening to this right now that have never lost their mind before. They've yeah. never been overwhelmed by something and just not known what to do, never been frozen. You ever been frozen, frozen. with fear? frozen with fear if you've never felt your fight or flight thing engaged then when it happens you won't know what it is yeah yeah. you want to know what it is so that way when it happens you can go oh, okay i know what's happening right here yeah boom yeah. i'm gonna make this i'm gonna make this decision yeah and how you're saying <clears throat> when you train boxing or um uh, boxing yeah yeah and mma so when you get hit in the face and we talked about this before when you get hit in the face and you haven't really been hit in the face before like that's a, it'll throw you off. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll for just sure. To, to put really mildly, it'll throw you off. So especially, yeah, you're you're right because when you see someone get punched in the face in a movie and it seems like it doesn't really phase them that much and they keep going, if that's what you expect is going to happen when you get punched in the face, that's the wrong idea. <laughs> yeah, because what's going to re- if you've never been punched in the face before when you get punched, it's a little shocker. Yeah. And there's pain and your eyes get blurry and you're you get a little flash I mean, there's a lot of things that go on when you get punched in the face yeah. once you get used to it You're like it, yeah. you can move right through it exactly. Yeah, but if you're not used to it. It's yeah. a problem Yeah fully and it's that's another one It's night and day when a guy has been hit in the face a bunch of times and is used to it and a guy who's not used to it because you know how like you can hit a guy in a face or get hit in the, in the face and they'll be like, uh, I'm done. Like, I, I yeah. didn't really expect this encounter, this experience, you know, when I get, and then other guys, they'll get hit in the face, break their nose, break their jaw, all this stuff, and they keep fighting, you know? Yeah. It's like, dang. So that night in a situation, if you're not used to it, which is essentially the same thing you went through. This guy went wild. He wasn't ready for this overwhelming experience and he lost his mind according yep. to him <laughs> yeah. get, so if you get hit in the face like i remember greg punched me in my face so hard mm. where i don't know if he was mad or or just, just greg got, <laughs> <laughs> greg yeah. james fires it off yeah. he punched me right between the eyes i thought he broke my face and it was the kind where it was a timing thing too where i came in i was shooting mm. in and right before i uh, level changed or whatever he it just connected i was like boom and I remember thinking, because I just kept going, and I remember thinking, dang, I'm glad I was kind of used to getting hit in the face, because that would have kind of, at the very least, paused me for a yeah. long time. Like, dang, he would have. But I'm th- when you imagine just that kind of chaos and sensation, that'll just stop you. But yeah. once you're used to it, you're good. And this is a good point to bring up with just with any kind of training, like leadership training, right? When you have leaders that haven't been put in certain situations before, that's why we, at Echelon Front we do like role-playing exercises with people. And you put people in situations, the first time you put them in situations like dealing with a hostile subordinate that doesn't want to do the plan, the first time they get put in that scenario, they, they, they just lose, they just fall apart. Yeah. They're like, well, no, I told you to do it. And you're like, okay, let's replay that. Mm. By the third time you're doing it, they're already handling the job, handling the scenario infinitely better, yeah. infinitely better than they did the first time. Yeah. So it's the same with everything in life. Like the exposure to it, and the rehearsal of it gives you such a massive advantage that to not rehearse and to not train is, it's actually sad. And that's actually, the, the Ashland Front's a great example because that's why we're in business. Because people people don't even know that they should be doing this. Yeah. And, and to go to a company that has 50, 100, 150, 200 leaders that are leading teams and they have no leadership training. And therefore, we're all surprised when the leader doesn't get the teams to do what they're supposed to do. Well, who taught them how to lead? 
Because you just don't show. You just not. You just don't show up to work knowing how to lead. No, you mm. actually get trained to lead. Yeah. All these unfamiliar micro scenarios happening. And, yeah. You know. That's that's one of the that's one of the cool. Like, like at the muster, we do these little drills at the muster, and you could see people are are overwhelmed with the knowledge that they gain from two or three little scenarios that we put in front of them. And these are common scenarios that happen all the time, but when you watch seasoned business leaders try and handle a scenario that they haven't seen before, now, they might have seen it before, but they never actually had to deal with it. The first time they try and deal with it, they fall apart. Yeah, And, and it's real, I would say it takes like 10 seconds before you go, okay, let's just stop, because you've already got this guy mad at you. Well, let's try this again. because. We, we haven't been through this situation before. They've never been punched in the face before. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah. Don't let it happen. Get punched in the face a few times in yeah. practice. You'd be, you yeah. Know, you can do this. It's kind of like, I remember when we were kids, there was this, there was this gum. You know, like Wrigley's chewing gum. Yeah. You know the little packs? There's yeah. like four or five of them yeah. in there. It's a small little thing. Yeah. And, you you know, you grab one, and there's one kind of sticking out. You can say, hey, hey, you know, do you want one? Yeah. Offer one to your friends. So it was my brother. And he did a long story, but he was crying from something else. So he was sad and he was like crying. And oh, by the way, you know, he offers me some gum. I grabbed the gum. It's one of those mouse traps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it slaps you and kind of hurts when mm-hmm. you're a little kid anyway. And it snaps my finger. I'm like, dang, I never, you know, I see he's laughing. He was crying from something else. And, and then he's laughing, cheered him up, whatever. Double leg. <laughs> <laughs> it was at the airport. Well, actually, which would have made the double leg even better. Nonetheless. I'd never seen that before. Now, someone offers me Wrigley's gum. I'm aware. I'm ready for that mousetrap. Maybe mm. the mousetrap, maybe not. But you're grabbing by the side. I'm grabbing by the side. <laughs> exactly right. Lesson learned. Yeah, exactly right. I don't have to endure that. I won't lose my mind. Life is no different. Next question. I'm a chef in a large operation kitchen. I'm second in command overseeing a large kitchen staff and part of a five-person management team overseeing the entire account. Recently, during my last review, I was given some advice by my boss and his boss. I'm unsure about. My last two annual reviews have gone very well, and I'm on the rise in the company. However, they said, if it was important for me to get, or he, however, they said it was important for me to give up some of my kitchen dog mentality and work to showcase my artistic side and embrace more of a star role in the spotlight. Get out of the kitchen a bit more, gain more exposure, specifically with our high profile clients. While I appreciate their sentiment and respect their big management skills, their style isn't one I strive to emulate or feel would work for me and the way I operate. I have always approached my work as more of a craft than an art and I've always like being a trench dog with my team. My team responds to it, and I get results for the business, and I feel the results should speak for themselves. It has propelled my career rapidly thus far, so why would I want to change and be something I'm not? Should I heed their advice or stick to what I do best and keep getting after it on my terms? Ah, that's one of those questions. <laughs> that's sure. just funny how, how that last statement is framed, right? Yeah, Should yeah. I stick to what I do best and keep getting after it? As if to say, if you say no, you You're, should not stick to what you do best. Yeah, it's like, and you yeah. should not get after it, right? <laughs> that's that's yeah. the frame there. And actually, this guy, I, I answered the question real tersely. I think this came through Facebook messages. You know, I said, uh, sounds like you found a comfortable little zone for yourself and you want to stay in there. Right, little cold blooded response, and he's like, "Ah, oh, I knew it." Uh, because, as we know, in the comfort zone, there's there's no growth in the comfort zone. No growth in the comfort zone. <laughs> so it's interesting. This guy is actually getting some some good, solid, and straightforward advice from up the chain of command. Uh, plus, I think if they have him as more of a personality, then the restaurant will do better, and they're trying to build their reputation and your reputation at the same time, and that seems pretty reasonable to me, right? And I'm not real familiar with the restaurant business, but I'm familiar enough to know if you've got a good reputation with the staff that works at the restaurant, it brings in more people. Like, there's no doubt about it. The, the relationship, just like any other business, the relationships that you build with the customers strengthens them, strengthens that relationship and makes them want to come back for more, yeah. right? That's the way it works. Yep. And so for them to say to you, hey man, 
hey, you know, you're a good cook. We get that, but we need a little bit more. We want a little bit more. Chef. We need somebody that has, yeah, chef. Sorry. <laughs> Can't see you're, cook. you're a good a chef. Different thing. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You're a good chef. Well, actually, what I, I think I might have actually purposely said that. Like, hey, you're doing a good job in the kitchen as a cook. We don't need someone that's just cooking the food. We need a chef with a reputation, with a personality, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a difference sure. there, right? Yes, sir. So it was called out for a reason. Gotcha. He's happy. And you can see, like, kitchen dog. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's yeah. proud of that, right? Yeah. And I get that, man. Oh, yeah, I get that. It. I get that. Like, you're one of the boys. You're back in the in the grind. But let me let me ask you this. Or let me make this statement. Guess what you have to do as a SEAL? As a SEAL leader, guess what you have to do? You have to build relationships. <laughs> you have to make your commanding officer trust you. You have to build relationships with the Army. You have to build relationships with the Marine Corps. You have to, and in order to do that, you have to like raise your, you have to call a little bit of attention to yourself and raise your hand and say, hey, this is who I am. You have to take, you, this is who I am. You, you have to, actually have to, step into the spotlight a little bit mm -hmm. so that you can let people know who you are because if people don't know who you are, how do you have a relationship with them? And if you don't have a relationship with people, how can they trust you? So, so that's part of it, right? That's part of what they're asking you to do. Now, in all seriousness, if, if you really don't want to do it, well, then you can keep being the guy that's in the back and guess what? You're going to be mad in six months when some other chef gets hired for a different shift and all of a sudden he's out making friends with everyone, he gets promoted. And why does he get promoted? Well, look at what the guy's doing. But he's not as good as he's not as good as a cook as I am. Guess what? They don't really care. Hmm. Being making the food is only part of what they want you to do. Just like being a SEAL, doing the, doing missions is only part of what they what you need to do to do the mission. Oh, yeah. You can't just be tactically sound. You've got to have the relationships built so you can work in the battle space that's owned by a conventional commander. you got to have the relationship that you can get your missions approved up the chain of command on the special operations side. How do you do that? You build. You go out. You talk to people. You get out of your comfort zone. It's a weird thing. You know, I, I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm kind of antisocial, right? Like, if you don't know me, we're not going to have a conversation. <laughs> you know, like, we're not having a Like, it's not I'm, not, I'm not walking up and talking to you. If I don't know you, I'm not walking up and saying hi to you. It's not happening. It's not my personality. If you say hi to me, I'll, I'll say hi. I'm not disrespectful. I'm not rude. But I'm not looking to have a bunch of conversations with people. And so that's known to me, but that's not okay for the business side of my life, which is, hey, I got to talk to people, got to build relationships, got to, had to know my commanding officer, had to know the Commodore, had to know the, the, the conventional battalion commander, had to know the brigade commander, had to build relationships. Could I just talk about war with the brigade commander? Well, I could, but what's more powerful that I talk about war and I talk about where I'm from or where he's from or what, you know, you know other things? Yes, because I want to build a relationship with him. Why? Because I'm trying to build trust. What? Why? Because I want him to allow me to go out there and do things in his battle space. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're asking you. They're asking you to step out of your comfort zone. It, does it need to become your primary focus? No. Should you try and step out of the comfort zone? If you want to grow. If you want to have more opportunity, I would give it a try. I would give it a try. If not, you know, like I said, if you hate it and you feel like you're not being true to your true self, that's okay. Maybe your true self is meant to be the one that's back not getting promoted. Yeah. They need somebody to do that. Yeah. If it's not you, it might be somebody else. Yeah. It's so another one of those tough questions where people, you know, hit me with like, should I just be, should I be loyal to myself? <laughs> Because the, the obvious like p answer that everyone wants to hear is like, yeah, dude, the most important thing is you got to be loyal to yourself. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Okay. If that's what your priority is, then that's the most important thing. But guess what? Who does a, who can take care of the other kitchen dogs that respect you so much? Who can take a better care of them than you can? Because if you get promoted, if you don't get promoted and, and, and Johnny Glamour boy... <laughs> 
gets promoted sure. because he likes to go out and schmooze the clients, and yeah. now he gets promoted. And you're, and now who's going to take care of the kitchen dogs on his, on his time, right? Not him. He doesn't yeah. care. He's got he got promoted not for taking care of his guys. He got promoted because he schmoozed the clients. Yeah, man. Play the game a little bit. It's weird, man. You're explaining that, and it's like. Yeah. Com- makes complete sense. I'm thinking of it in terms of like being a, I don't know. I guess it applies to any relationship you have. So, so like, let's say, okay, you have a wife, right? You're you're married, whatever, and so your wife wants to go to hypothetically, wife wants to go to I don't know Vermont, mm-hmm. right? And you're like, hey, I don't like Vermont. You know, go to Vermont or whatever. But your wife's like, hey, I want you to come. Because I like spending time with you and, and all this stuff. And as a husband, you're like, hey, I like spending time with you too. Why can't we do something that I specifically like to do or whatever? And it has to do so, a lot of times with like maybe your wife's friends or the in-laws. So I don't want to hang with them. I want to hang with you, but I don't want to hang with them. And the wife wants to hang with you with the friends and all this stuff or whatever. But a lot of the time, in my case might have been me just sticking in my little comfort zone you know like the people that i like to hang out with there there's like set stuff that i know yeah. they're into and i know they like to talk about it and all this stuff and i'm essentially rejecting being open to new or other stuff you know that's you know that's kind of like a situation but in a way i'm kind of doing what this um what this guy's implying where it's like, I'm going to say true to myself and my interests and all this stuff. I love my wife 100%. That has nothing to do with it. Vermont has nothing to do with me and my wife, you know. Mm. But why shouldn't I step outside of my comfort zone and, you know, try to accommodate her wishes in this way? It's not a make or break of relationship or nothing like that. But if I do that, if I just exercise the ability to be open, I become more valuable of a husband, more valuable. I offer more value in the relationship and as a person. So same exact thing when you're explaining this, when this guy's explaining where he's awesome in the, as a chef in the back doing the, you know, doing his deal, doing what he does best. Awesome. But they, and these guys see it, his superiors see it, obviously, where they're like, hey, we want you to do this more stuff yeah. even because you're awesome. And man, imagine if you had this, this more stuff, you know, how valuable you would be as a X, Y, Z, whatever the position is in this case as a chef. And to reject that is essentially to say, you know what, I, I don't want to be more valuable as a chef or mm-hmm. I don't want to be more valuable as a husband. I, I'd prefer to stick with my current value. I don't want to upgrade. There you go. I refuse to upgrade. So I'm staying true to myself. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, next question. I mean, can you cross the line and get to a point where you make yourself sick because you've done yeah then you've gone too far that's the dichotomy of leadership like yeah if you become just a a disgusting sycophant then yeah guess what that's not good yeah so i'm not talking about that yeah i'm not talking about leaving your values and abandoning your values that's not what i'm talking about right talking about playing the game a little bit there's a big difference step outside of the comfort zone play the game a little bit at the very least do it with an open mind see how you like it what if you were like, you got real good at that? You know how like public speaking, for example, where I'm no exception. A lot of people, they don't like public speaking, even though they might have a lot to say or whatever, you know, like some people like they're, they're smart, but they're, I don't want to get up on stage, nothing like that. That's dumb. I'm not, I'm not a star. I don't want the limelight on me and all this stuff. And they do it one time and they, and they offer like just so much value doing it. And then they get used to it. And then all of a sudden they, they kind of like it, you know, it could be one of those deals. Could be could be you never know until you try it next question two of my bosses have told me i don't like jocko interesting interesting concept without giving any value valid reasons their ego is in the way how do i flank them to help them see the path my belief is that they're afraid of the truth and they they're afraid of the truth they see in extreme ownership Okay, so, uh, yeah, I mean, clearly ego could be a problem here as a leader, you know, who wants to constantly be compared to some other leader, right? You know, if you were teaching a jujitsu oh, class, yeah. and someone's like, well, the, the, way that, the way that Dean teaches this, you know, that, that would make you mad after a while. Yeah, I didn't even think of so that. So that could be part of the problem. Oh, that's dead. 
that's definitely yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's way up there on the list totally of possible things could be the military flavor right some people don't like the military flavor thing so that's that's okay it's it's can turn some people off they don't want to hear about it that's fine uh the reality is here's the but here's the reality of the situation okay what is there to not like about the things that i talk about right so let's say you know what i don't like people taking ownership i want everyone to make excuses and blame each other right it right, doesn't right. it doesn't even make sense you know instead of you know, we i don't want to hear about this cover move i want everyone to ignore each other and worry about themselves right like that that that, that makes no sense whatsoever you know, if uh, keep, keeping things simple, I don't want to, hey, look, I don't want to keep things simple. I want everything to be so complicated that no one knows what's going on, right? Like mm. the, these things, they make no, there's no human being, no one in a leadership position that would want everyone or that would, that would go against what these simple principles. So n- how do you fix it then, right? What's the problem? Uh, one, here's a couple, and, and actually this was a Twitter Thing and a bunch of people gave great responses on Twitter after I kind of highlighted it. Um, one w- one of them, and my my actual response was like, "Hey, just don't you know stop using my name, you know, stop saying well, Jocko said because you can yeah. imagine how annoying that must oh, be. Yeah. Well, Jocko saying you know when you're in a leadership position, you know, it's like that's going to really grate on somebody. So 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 throw that out the window. Don't pit it as me." Jocko against the, what your bosses are saying. No, right. don't do that. You've set up an adversarial relationship with them, and you've set up an adver- adversarial relationship with me. And I've never even met these people before. <laughs> I don't even know who they are. I don't even know what business they're in. Mm. But what you've done by constantly harping on it is you've pissed them off. And now they're saying, "Dude, quit talking about Jocko. We don't care." Because also the way that he's inter- just the way he's being offensive in approaching these things means that he has a little more listening and growing to do because if you really want to approach your boss or you know he asked about flanking his boss well the way you flank someone isn't going hey the way Jocko says you should do this like no that's not good so let the principles work and another another person pointed out you know um hey don't hey stop trying to impose your things on them like take extreme ownership how's that sound you step up and start leading you do your thing you perform well quit talking quit trying to force these things down people's throats and give them space give them room and then they'll recognize that you're doing a good job if you label it with something that you know they don't like well then they're not going to like it no matter what you do no matter what you do that's going to be problematic. Don't bludgeon them with, with well, you know, I this is blah, blah, blah. No, don't do that. Yeah. Take, let, put your ego in check. How's that sound? Put your ego in check a little bit. Make the ideas that you're talking about their ideas. Get them to talk about ownership. You know, get them, maybe they call it something else other than extreme ownership. Maybe they call it, you know, uh, personal accountability. Okay, awesome. That's great. Yeah, I really like that. I really like what you've come up with, boss. I'm in with that. Oh, well, now they're in the game, mm. and they don't realize that you're talking about the same thing. Yeah. That's fine. Don't they? Don't ever have to realize that. They don't ever have to realize that. So, I mean, there's some people. There's some people that don't like. Even in the teams, there's people that like. They didn't like me. Didn't yeah. matter. Didn't matter where what the the principle was. Didn't make. No, that's no. Uh. <laughs> it's like no. Like, hey, just, just, sure. just don't, don't attach my name to it. Yeah, and go and do, be a good leader. How's that? Yeah. So, those are some things. I think if you live, live the principles, act on the principles. No one's going to be mad at you for taking ownership and responsibility of what you're doing, unless you say, "Hey, you like how I took ownership of that?" Well, then you might paint yourself into a corner where yeah. you end up <laughs> being stupid, yeah. or they end up not accepting what you're doing. Yeah. And they'll get mad at you for stepping on their toes, of course. And it is also, as you do this, as you take ownership, don't rub their noses in it. Mm. You give them credit. How hard is that? You know, you come up with a pro- solution to the problem. Say, hey, you know, actually, I got this idea from something I saw you doing. Really? Right? That's how sure. you. That's how you flank them. Yeah. Hey, I took ownership of this problem. Oh, oh really? Oh, you took. Oh, here we go. Extreme. No, no, no. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. You know, it's like, hey, boss, I, I wanted to make sure this got done correctly. I was watching the way you did blah, 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 blah. And you go from there. Yeah. Give them the idea. Yeah, it makes sense. It, 
Yeah, I, I wonder how the boss got introduced to the concept of Jocko for him to eventually hate or in not the, like. In not this like. situation, it probably was like, you know, multiple repetitions of, well, you know, Jocko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, you, you, and, and didn't pick up the vibe. Yeah. Which is like, hey, I'm dealing with someone with a big ego and they're not going to take well to me talking about this other guy's yeah. leadership style. Oh. Do you, you don't want to be compared to some other leader if you're oh. in a leadership position? Yeah. And, and oh, man, also, this is kind of the same thing, but a little bit different. The, that thinking about that type of scenario, man, that's the worst. That's like, as a boss, I would think that that'd be really bad. Cause okay, <laughs> yeah. so here here's a here's a situation. So I make videos sometimes, right? And so let's say I'm, and actually this is an actual thing that actually happened. Where okay, so I made this video for this we'll say client, and kind of say okay, you know they look at it and it's typical, you know they'll have some input, maybe some information they want to add or take or change or whatever. And then um, this guy said, oh, yeah, I'm not sure about this part. I showed it to my wife and she said, you know, X, Y, Z and X, Y. And I'm thinking, OK, I get it. Like, OK, you showed it to people that I understand. But I was like, wait, wait, wait. So this is a video I made for you and your deal, you know, kind of thing. And you went and showed your wife and then now she has some kind of input. She's not part of this deal, you know. <laughs> Now you're like citing your wife's critique and like all this stuff. And it doesn't make sense, by the way, as far as what we've discussed and all this stuff. Right. So the, so the wife is kind of, now I kind of have this kind of disdain for the wife. I don't know the wife at all, by the way. Uh, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm just not feeling the wife anymore. Yeah, your ego got in the way a little a, bit, right? A little bit. Yeah. And, it's, and it's natural is what yeah. I'm saying, where it's kind of like, I thought we were doing this video kind of together and I was like, do this for you and you give me the input. And now you involved your wife in it who threw the whole thing off because she's not even part of this little yeah. thing right it's now. It's really hard to put your ego in check. It's really hard to put your ego in check and actually listen to what the critique points are. It's e it's hard for anyone to do that, you know? And so when it happens, you have to go, okay, uh, 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 that's my ego, and you need to put it aside. Yeah, so consider this situation. If the guy would have just said, don't say I showed it to my wife and she said this. Don't say, if he would have said, well, I was thinking about this, which is what the wife said, yeah. you know, in there, whatever. And I was thinking about this. What are they, it would have de got delivered way better, way easier. Mm. Same thing with your, your situation. If someone's saying, I don't know, let's say, uh, for example, it's a, a fireman. It's a fireman. And, you know, the, the boss is saying, hey, we should do this and do that. And then this guy just out of the blue says, well, Jocko said this <laughs> boss is like, who the hell is yeah, Jocko? Exactly. I don't remember hiring Jocko. Who exactly. the, Who is this guy? And what's he talking about? Yeah. Cool. But Jocko has no say in this department. It's me. It's you. It's the team, you know, the team that totally. we've worked with kind of thing. And that's kind of the feeling. So, yeah, man, don't say Jocko. Yeah. Leave Jocko. Leave out, of out of Leave him, you know. I don't need the credit <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next question, Jocko, please explain how working harder for an incompetent superior helps oneself. I feel like screw them and whatever lightning bolt of luck they were struck by to get in their position. Is that kind of like screw them and the horse they rode in on yeah, kind of thing? That yeah, that is. Yeah. No, he's saying screw them and they, they were, they're they in their position of superiority because they got lucky. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't get lucky. All that screw and them. them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, here's the answer to that. It's like, okay, so what are you going to do then? <laughs> uh, yeah. What are you gonna do then? Are you gonna sit around and wait for your own bolt of lightning of luck to hit you? <laughs> Is that what you're gonna do? I don't recommend that. Instead, I, I recommend that you step up and yes, you do work harder. And you do the best possible job that you can do and you take some pride in what you're doing and how you're doing it and you do it better than they could, not to rub their nose into it, not to prove that you can do it better, but out of professionalism that's why you do it now one outcome that can come from that is they get credit for your work and that makes you all mad no that's actually good because if they get credit for your work guess what the work's going well they're gonna get promoted and they get the recognition okay that's fine but but they know where the actual credit goes even if they don't give it to you even if they don't give it to you, they know it. Even if they're the type of person you could, th that doesn't even realize that the, the, you're like, oh, wow, I did all that work and he's taking all the credit for it. They don't even know that I made this happen or he doesn't even know that, he, that I made this happen. Yeah. They know. Mm. They know. So as long as you can keep your ego in check and you can let them have the credit, eventually 
they get promoted, the team's doing well, you'll look good, you'll get promoted, your life is easy, you're gaining experience, you've got a good reputation, like everything is going in your direction. And and by the way, when that incompetent person does get promoted, who do they usually recommend that fills their spot? You, because you're the one that got them promoted. They're stoked on that. Now, you become a superstar. That's great. Eventually, they're going to get found out, by the way. Like someone, incompetency can't be hidden forever. And eventually someone says, wait a second, you don't even know how to do this. That was, that was Echo Charles that was doing this, this whole time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to promote Echo. You're out of here. Th- that, that'll happen. And when that happens, when that incompetency gets found out, then you will get the recognition you deserve because people said, oh, that wasn't Jocko doing all this stuff. This was Echo. Mm-hmm. And they go, oh, Jocko, you're done. So, that, so that's something that can happen. Or another outcome that can happen is that they give you the credit that, that you're due, which is great. And you still get promoted. And you may get promoted above them, which is fine too. Or, and, or they might get promoted, which is fine. Stop worrying about it. So those two things, if you do a good job, eventually something good is gonna come out of it. Whether it's they get, whether it's you both get promoted, whether it's they get promoted above you, whether it's you get promoted above them, it doesn't matter. All those outcomes, or maybe it's just the team continues to do well and your job is stress-free and you continue to perform and, and the, 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 the division that you're in grows and you get a chance to promote because everyone's getting promoted. It's like all good, all good stuff. Or you can be angry and you can be frustrated and you can blame your own bad luck and you can not work hard and you can not do a good job and you can be recognized as a slacker and you can get blamed by the incompetent boss when things do fall short. Because that's what the incompetent boss does. He doesn't step up and take ownership of it. He says, no, you know what? I would have done a better job, but Echo was slacking. That's the problem. Now Echo gets fired. And and guess what? Someone we hire someone else to come in and they start doing a good job. The boss is still going to look good <laughs> and still get promoted. It's just that you lost your job. And by the way, you lost your job with a bad reputation. Now you can't even get a recommendation for a new job. Yeah. So you lose. lose. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. So step up, do your best. It'll pay off in the long run. Yeah. It's funny how like it's one of those things where if you can just flip the switch and see that just that one yeah. little thing. And it's funny though too the way those the way these questions are framed, you know what they want to hear mm-hmm. is like no you know what if you got an incompetent boss you don't help him out you yeah. let him burn. Yeah, that's what you do. That's what people want to hear. It's, yeah. But it's it's the easy answer and it's not the smart answer. Yeah. And it's a short term answer, not a long term answer. Yeah. Make your boss look great. How's that? That's my goal. I want to make my boss look great. You yeah. know. There, there was a little tell in the in the question too. I, I'm no expert, obviously, a but lightning I, bolt of luck. Of luck, yeah. So you know the whole deal, and this is even you can be a normal person and recognize this. Like people who are bitter. I'm not saying the asker of this question is bitter. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this is a, a, a external scenario. But you know how if you get a bitter person who's just bitter in life, maybe not doing as well in life as they had you know had hoped or whatever, you'll Probability wise, you'll probably encounter them from time to time, no more, saying how the guy who is successful is lucky. They're lucky. They had it given to them, like all this, all this other stuff. Me, I'm not lucky, whatever, whatever. But it's always the the successful guy is lucky. Always. Yeah, they attribute other people's success to luck. To luck. For sure. So the lightning bolt of luck and screw them you know kind of thing just that is indicative i'm not saying it is i'm not saying it is or isn't as far as this particular person but it tends to be like that and again like that just that switch if you can like turn on the switch and just look at it just like how you said it's not intuitive i get it man because it's it's like this i was in that situation where like literally i was doing the work so many think about this you just said you're in this situation almost everybody has been in this situation and here's the difference if you don't flip that switch and you're in this situation, your whole life goes down in the other direction. Yeah. That's Crazy. the real problem. That's yeah. why you meet people. You, you know, this is a, a thing I think about a lot. You, you know how you, you know people in your life, they're badasses, mm-hmm. but, they, but they're not going anywhere? Like, like you look at them and you go, man, this guy's smarter than me and, and a better athlete than me and a better speaker than me. But they're not going anywhere. And you know why? It's because at some point in their life, instead of saying, oh, wow, that guy's, that guy's lucky. 
Th- that's what they do. At some point in their life, instead of saying, hey, that person worked to get in that situation and I should do the same, instead mm-hmm. of saying that, they say, oh, that person got lucky. Yeah. That's why they're there and I'm down here. Yeah, I'm you better can't than make, him. Yeah, you can't yeah. make the upward climb. If you don't say, you know what, hey, that person might be a little luck there, but guess what? They're obviously working hard. They're obviously doing something right because I'm down here and they're up there. Yeah. How do I get up there? Yeah. The answer to get up there is not by tearing them down. The answer to get up there is by working hard. Yeah. Make them look good. That The line you said, so, um, what and so what are you going to do about it? Yeah, I what are you going to do about that's it? That's the switch right there. Because, I mean, you deal with it with kids. Obviously, I have some young kids. And, you know, same thing. Like, oh, this is how it is. Or this happened or, or whatever. Spilt milk. I don't know. Whatever. And, you know, the kid's crying. And so all this stuff. It's like, okay, so what are you going to do about it? So you can cry. You totally can. And you can complain about how junk that is that the milk got spilt or your toy broke or whatever the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's all true. It's absolutely true. And go ahead. You can cry or whatever. But if that's what you're going to do about it, then okay. Then that's what it's going to be. And that's all it's going to be. You're going to continue to cry. And you'll probably continue to cry next time it happens too. Or you clean up the milk. You fix your toy. Whatever. You know, whatever. What are you going to do about it? That's the whole yeah. thing, you know. What are you going to do about it? It's interesting too. There's like a, just a known the the right answer seems really obvious when we talk about it right now, but yeah. not many people see that right answer. No, most it's... people want to just be mad at their boss and be frustrated and undermine them and not work hard so that they don't get any shine on them. It's like okay, great, that's you're putting yourself in that barrel too. Yeah, don't do it. It's crazy, man. It's actually I shouldn't say it's crazy. It's it, it makes sense. I mean, I felt that before, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Next question. Can you be default aggressive and relaxed in jujitsu? Okay, yeah, this seems like two opposing things that you can't do at the same time, but the actual fact is, yes, you can and you should. So you want your maneuvers to be aggressive, but you don't want to be using a bunch of strength to execute the maneuvers, right? You want to aggressively escape your opponent's position before your opponent gets settled. Therefore, you don't have to use strength. You can use relax. It. You can relax. You can you can be proactive. Same thing with defending a, a, a submission attempt. You want to sub- defend that submission attempt aggressively before the submission attempt gets settled in. You want to move aggressively. Again, I'm not talking about strength and spazzing. I'm talking about moving aggressively before your opponent moves and get ahead of them on their OODA loop. When you get ahead of them on their OODA loop, they're going to have issues with you. And so, yeah, absolutely. You can be default aggressive and at the same time you can be relaxed and you should. That should be your goal. Do you sometimes have to use strength in jiu-jitsu? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Sometimes you got to power out of something. Why did you, the reason you had to power out of something is because you were too late because you weren't (laughs) moving aggressively enough. You weren't moving quickly enough. And so then you got to power out of something. You got to claw those hands, claw that guillotine off your neck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know when you get a guillotine on someone and they're clawing your fingers away from their neck? Yes. Yeah. So when that happens, that person was late. Yeah. And, and now they're clawing. They're resorting to strength. They're resorting to panic, clawing yeah. at your fingers. Yeah. Sometimes it, do, it usually doesn't even matter. They can claw. doesn't matter. Yeah. Good. No, I, <laughs> I yeah. like that sense of panic that, <laughs> that I feel when they're clawing. Yeah, I'm sure you do. You really you seem like you like it a lot. <laughs> it's good, man. So that's what that's what it is. And by the way, this is true in life as well, right? Yeah. Like if if you are maneuvering correctly correctly as a leader, you don't have to get aggressive at people because they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Right? You don't have to be, you shouldn't have to yell. If you have to yell as a boss, guess what? Your your intent wasn't followed. Your plan wasn't understood. There's so many mistakes that you made if you're yelling as a leader. Mm. Do you never have to yell? Yeah, sure, sometimes you can yell because you got to make sure you get that emotional point across sometimes. You got to make sure that someone reali- like someone doesn't seem to realize that the mistake that they made is severe enough that, that it warrants a yelling and therefore it doesn't matter to them because their dad yelled at them their whole life. Well, so if you're not yelling, they don't get it. Mm-hmm. So can you, can, can you run into that cake? problem occasionally occasionally mm. very occasionally very very rarely should you run into that situation because if you're doing the right job being default aggressive as a leader you should be in situations where you never have to yell because your people 
because your people understand what it is that they're supposed to be doing they understand why they're supposed to be doing it they understand what the plan is they understand what the contingencies were they understand what the what the intent that you had was they understand that the way that this fits strategically into the situation they understand all those things and if they understand all those things then they're going to do the right thing and if they don't if they understand all those things and they still do something that that doesn't make sense well maybe they do deserve to get yelled at but again all the first person i check is myself mm. And say, well, I obviously had to make this clear enough. Mm. So, so yes, relax harder. <laughs> so, so yelling is to leading as using strength is to jujitsu. Somewhat. You got to do it every once yeah, in a while. Every once in a while. Or if you're late, maybe you, you lacked on your technique earlier. You got to kind of make up for yeah, it a little and, bit. And then, but think about this. You hurt your stamina. When yeah, you yeah. Use your strength. right. You and pay up a when you price yell, there. when I yell at you because something went wrong, and you're my subordinate, when I yell at you, I pay a little price for that too. Yeah, because it better be important, yeah. and I better really think about it because I didn't do anything to build our relationship in a positive manner by yelling at you. Yeah. Right? Didn't do anything. Yeah. Just like you didn't improve your jujitsu yes. technique or knowledge when you used strength, or, or really, you I guess you improved your situation for a moment, right? Because you escaped, right. but yeah. now you're more tired. <clears throat> Just like if I yelled at you to do something and you did it because you real, you know, you were like, okay, well, fine, I don't want to get yelled at anymore, so I'm just going to do this yeah. thing that he told me to do. That yeah. it's temporary. A it's a temporary fix. There. It's yeah. a temporary fix. Yeah, you know how like JP will say, um, aggressive. It isn't. Or default aggressive isn't towards people; it's towards making things happen. So, like, so in jujitsu, same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't aggressively like it's, and it in a way you kind of can narrow it down to the timing thing. It's like it's like it's either taking action or hesitating kind of thing. So you just don't really hesitate. You can lay back if that's part of the strategy and For stuff sure. like that. You can relax when it's part of the strategy, but it's about making things happen. Like, what are you trying to make things happen timing wise? So you know how like you have the thing Tim Ferriss asks, what is the disrespect. Remember, you asked me that. What's the disrespect? Oh, it's a, a jujitsu movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. guard pass. You're did that. You made up, by the way. Yeah, the, the, you made up the terminology as well. So the disrespect is as basically at, when a guy pulls guard or you're in a guard scenario. It's actually not even a guard scenario yet. Mm -hmm. It's like you essentially treat that person like they don't even have a guard. Like the guard <laughs> doesn't even exist. That's how little respect you have for the guard and then you just pass. But when you kind of think about it, when I think about it, when you, you've done it to me the times you have, it is literally that. So before I can establish any kind of position to establish guard, you're just, Boom. You just yeah, you're past it. You're done. You know, you don't even consider the guard. You know what's weird is, is where people get confused on this, though, is they think, Oh, so you're saying move faster. Yeah. Right? That's the weird thing. Yeah. And it is, it's not, it's, uh, I'm sure I'll think of this at a later time, but it's not about moving faster. Yeah. It's about moving more aggressively, right? Yeah, it's, it's not faster. It's like being proactive and being yeah. aggressive yeah. and, and shutting down the situation before it, before yeah. it even becomes the situation that you know it's going to become. Yep. So if you take, um, like you said, like the, like if you take uh, taking action and hesitation, you take those two, it's basically you're narrowing the hesitation down to zero, if yes, possible. Just That's action. That's literally what it is. Yeah. yeah. Just take action. And again, you can relax, you can wait, but it's not hesitation waiting. It's waiting. It's like more like being patient or waiting for a very specific reason. You can do all, like all those things, but there's no hesitation. That's what I think that is. And then obviously it's going to vary from yeah, game to game. Yeah, this is something game. you hear over and over and over again in combat leadership philosophies. Like mm. doing something now is better than waiting. Yeah, doing doing something now. doing something that's pretty good right now is infinitely better than doing something that's great in two days. Yeah, yeah. Good plan <laughs> right? now, better than a great it's plan. It's like later. be aggressive, make something happen. Yeah, like that is so important. Can you overdo it? Yes, you can. Can you make stupid decisions because you rushed? Yes, you can. Yeah. Is there a dichotomy in this? Absolutely, <laughs> there is. Do you, that's there's a dichotomy in every part of it. So, yeah. in every type of leadership, there's a dichotomy in jujitsu, right? Mm -hmm. There's a dich because if I just rush to a situation, well, that might be the situation that you wanted me to rush right. to. The you trap. gave me the opening, the trap. Yeah, the trap. So it's like you know when you're like helping your friend move, and then you have like three, four other friends, you know. And everyone's waiting around to be like, okay, where do we start? Okay, where do we put, you know, where do we start? Who's starting first kind of thing? Mm -hmm. The default aggressive guy is just going to start moving stuff. Yeah. 
And that seems like, okay, that's like a little lighthearted scenario. But bro, that's real. That's when I would run into it. You know when there's a bunch of people and we're all capable of making the decision? It kind of paralyzes everyone because. Oh, this is so true. It, that scenario that you're talking about, it happens over and over and over again in the business world. It happens over and over again on the battlefield. It happens on the training field where there's a bunch of people and no one's taking leadership yeah. position. Yeah, like and, you're, and all you're, it takes is someone to say, hey, we're moving this over here. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, get all this stuff off the truck right now. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, guys are like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll make it yeah. happen. Yeah, like your uh, oil rig scenario. Yeah, the, the that's main the one. exact same thing. Yeah, and if you're default aggressive, meaning that's your default, that's the that's your zero. You're, right. the, you're that, 100%. Right then you're just handling business right. your whole life. Until you take it too far yeah, yeah. and you're trying to run stuff that other people might have a better vision of what to do. Yeah. Like if I might be, if I'm only moving for the first time ever m- on our moving team and I come in, I'm like, hey, guess what? Hey, we're going to start getting this heavy stuff. And you're like, hey, actually, that's not a good idea. Yeah, We should do this. We should get this stuff in here into the truck first or whatever, right? Because yeah. you've been doing it longer. Mm. So even though it's got to be your default mode, again, there's a dichotomy you can push it too far. Yeah. To keep your eyes open. Next question. Let's do one more. Jocko, how do self awareness, self assessment, and self improvement begin? And how do they continue over time? Well, they're all tied together. And it starts with being self aware, with being able to. Detach because if you if you can't detach from yourself Then you can't see yourself and so People ask then how do you detach from yourself? How do you learn to do that and a good drill for this is try to imagine? The way other people see you and what other people are thinking of you and one place where this happens and it definitely happened to me is when I started getting put in charge of things I started thinking about other people's perspectives w- What are they seeing? if you're in charge then What do your subordinates see you do? What do your subordinates hear you say? What kind of representation are they receiving in if you work for someone else, it's the same questions. What does the boss see me do? What does the boss hear me say? What kind of representation am I making of myself to my boss? And then you start thinking about what do your friends and family think? What do they see? What do they hear? And so the question becomes, how well do you represent yourself? What shortfalls do you have? Now, when you first start looking, it's like you're looking at an overgrown lawn. There are some big, obvious problems. So you do a broad, just kind of general cut of the grass. You fix some of the big, easy problems that are obvious. And once you've done that, once you've gotten rid of some of those big obvious problems, you notice some more detailed problems. So then you handle them. And once you've got those handled, you see even smaller and more detailed issues. So you start trying to fix them. And that's what you do with yourself. You continually detach and then you look and then you refine and then you detach and then you look and then you refine and then you detach and then you look and then you refine. That's what you do. That's how you get better. And that process doesn't stop, it can't stop because if you stop refining, then then the weeds grow back and the next thing you know you can't see yourself anymore and when you can't see yourself anymore when you stop looking at you yourself then you accept you accept anything and that's wrong 
don't accept the faults don't give yourself the benefit of the doubt you've got to be your own harshest critic and hold the line and don't let go and I think that's all I've got for tonight so echo Charles yes speaking of improving ourselves sure if you have any recommendations as to how we might be able to improve ourselves a little bit sure improve and maintain improve maintain improve ma- well something like that I would recommend okay let's start with the workout right work it out is established and known, well known, by the way, to be one of the only things that you can do that will affect every other part of your life in a good way. It's also one of those things that, well, more health. If you lose that, you lose everything. Mm. It's one of those things. So why do some of us not regard it in that way 100% of the time? Why is Why do people not have time to exercise? Lack of discipline. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly, it might be that short-term payoff thing. Mm. You know, you know, it's natural to seek short-term payoff. It's natural. I think that's it, because again, you lose your health, you lose everything, straight up. So why wouldn't health be first on the priority list? I don't have time to exercise. No, you have time to exercise. You might not have time to the rest of the stuff in life. Really, that's how it should be, right? Nonetheless, when you're exercising, your joints might. Degenerate, <laughs> but don't worry about that. Even because Jocko supplements, Jocko supplements, Jocko Super Krill Oil. This is omega threes for your joints. For a lot of other stuff too, by the way. Brain, skin, skin tone. That's like a supplemental <laughs> thing, but it is good for it nonetheless. That's a fact. And another one called Jocko Joint Warfare. So your joints. You, you, when you start to lose the functionality of your joints, not only does it make workouts less. Desirable, less fun, effective, less fun, less everything. It can it can jam up your health. Like physically, you can be less capable. So you want to maintain your joints. I didn't know this, but now that I do, I'm never looking back. Jocko Super Curl, take that and Joint Warfare. Maintain the joints, maintain joint health every single day. Get the subscription so you don't run out. That's what I say straight up. There's a panic mode if you run out. Yeah, and you don't <laughs> want that panic mode. You don't even need that panic mode. You don't no. need that in your life even, so why even bother? So get the subscription, do the recurring one every month. Every two months, however often you take them, uh, depending you know how, how nuts you want to get. Also, Jocko has a supplement. This is for your brain and your body, all in one. You don't have to take the pre-workout and the cognitive enhancing uh, nootropic. You don't have to do that anymore. You take the, just the one. It's called Discipline. Tastes good too, lemon lime. Force multiplier, that's what Indeed. we call it. You know? Boom, that's a good one. Take that; that'll help you. That'll take help you stay on task. Find all the words that you're looking for to use. You know, you don't. Want, well, what do you call that anyway? Not brain fart. Brain fart's such a lame word. Not lame. It's not a lame word. It's a lame word when I say it. Absent mindedness. Absent mindedness. You know, it kind of combats all that stuff. Present mindedness is the opposite of absent. Technically. Yes, technically, yeah. Nonetheless, <laughs> promote that and you're all good. It's called Discipline. Get all these at OriginMain.com. The company is Origin. I say Origin Main. I just, that's the company. I say it's Origin Main, but it's really called Origin. It's in Maine. And the website is OriginMain.com. Also on Origin Main, Geese and Rash Guards for your jujitsu journey. Important journey, by the way. I would say 90, I would say everyone, 100% of, well, not 100%. Almost 100% of people who start jujitsu will say, okay, it's valuable. Whether they stick with it or not, mm. you cannot deny the value of jujitsu. Even with that, that one of the questions earlier. Boom, you inoculate yourself you know, to all these things. And it's weird how it affects the rest of your life. Jiu-jitsu is good. Yeah. For your whole life. Yeah. Nonetheless, when you start, you can ask, what gi should I get? Guess what? Origin. You get an origin gi made in America. The fabric's made in America. The cotton to make the fabric is made in America. Grown in America. See, we're going all the way down to grown. Straight up. 
from dirt, from the dirt. To the shirt. To the shirt, to the gee top, to all that stuff. They also got hoodies. Pete sent me some new sweat suit situation. Oh. Joggers. Are they nice? Got them on right now. Yeah. Straight up most comfortable, <laughs> most comfortable clothes. Thing. This goes for all clothing I've ever had. And uh, that's saying a lot. That you know, most comfortable dress. Straight up is. Straight <laughs> up. Yes. 100%. Um, is it because it's made in America? Maybe, maybe not. But it does speak a lot for the quality of origin in and of itself. And oh, wait, it's comfortable because it was made in America. Uh, that's the question: Is it or isn't it? I don't know. But it is comfortable. Hundred percent. The most, most comfortable. Most comfortable. That's the, a the bold top. statement. And I know it is because you are one that deals high in comfort. I levels. know my comfort <laughs> levels. Yes, I mean comfort connoisseur. Hundred percent. And this one graded off the charts. Check. But you lay down, you take a break. So I export stuff, you know, in in, in video editing, special right. effects. You got to export. So 3D stuff export takes a long time. 3D Studio Max mm-hmm. is what it's called. Takes a long time. So while it exports, you start using your computer doing other things. It kind of, you know, it can jam you up. It'll slow down your computer, whatever. So, you know, I take a little break. I'm going to lay down on the couch. I got my <laughs> origin whole sweatsuit on. Get some. <laughs> and I lay down on the couch. And I'm like, this for some for some reason I'm the most comfortable I've ever been in my life. You need to life. make we I'll talk to Pete. You need like a uh, a signature series comfort, comfort outfit. Series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have it on right now. Yeah. That's it. You know, all you gotta do is rename it, embroider it right on the side, boom. Echo Done. Charles cruising in comfort. Oh, big time. Dang. And here's the thing, sure I say that, and I know comfort is kind of a subjective thing. Maybe. Well, okay. I challenge anyone to, to, if you have the origin sweatsuit or if you get one, get on it, lay down on your couch. <laughs> Temperature would have to be just right because if it's hot and you have a sweatsuit on, it's not going to be as comfortable. But keep that in mind. I challenge you to do that. Report back. If it's not the most comfortable, let me know. For real, 100%. <laughs> you Jack. get a taste of real comfort. <laughs> American made comfort too, by the way. Also, if you're into jujitsu. Or if you're not into jiu-jitsu, there's a jiu-jitsu immersion camp on August 26th this year. goes to uh, September 2nd, one week, yep. two sessions in that one week. Yep. I'm going, Jocko's doing, going, and so is Dave Burke, the real top gun. The real Dave top gun. Dave Burke, yes. Good deal, Dave. There. Good deal, Dave. You know why he's going? He sounded like a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> It if is Dave a Burke good is deal. going, you know it's a good deal. No, it's Dave, a good deal. Dave does not do non-good deal things. Yeah, and good deal not in the sense where it's like a good deal, like um, you know, like uh, I'm gonna get over. It's like a good deal, like it's like it's good. It's a win, 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 win. It's oh, like the best deal, best case scenario <laughs> kind of thing. That's what good deal Dave is all about. That's Check. just him. That's how he is. How he rolls. Unless other people would be there. Who else would be there? Hopefully JP. Yeah. And Leif. Yeah. Well, Leif just got his a stripe, another stripe on the white belt. On the white belt. Yeah. So he's getting. He, he might very well be there. As getting a, it. You think it'll be a blue belt by then? Maybe. Should at be. this pace. Yeah. yeah. If he keeps training hard. Yeah. And well, he has prior knowledge as well. So yeah, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. So did you just immerse yourself in jujitsu. Best way to learn, in my opinion. Mine too. And a lot. Even if you've never gone, go because yeah, last time um, I even went on the side with beginner beginners. Like one day, zero days yeah. experience, boom, we go through some some stuff. From And I'm not saying, like, oh, I'm such a good teacher. I'm not saying that at all. But after, like, that session, they were ready to go start rolling. Humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I know this because that's what they said. Not that, not all of them, but some of them said that. Nonetheless, I'm saying there's a lot of value, <laughs> jujitsu value, if you've never done jujitsu before, ever. So yeah, go Check. originmain.com. Check it out. See if it's for you. It's for you, but you want to make sure and check on that one. It's a good one. Also, Jocko has a store. It's called Jocko Store. Go to jockostore.com. So Jocko Store is where you can get shirts, T-shirts. Discipline equals freedom. Get after it. Shirt with Jocko's big head on it that says good. Just for those days that, you know, you're powering through some adversity. Whatever. Got Jocko there right on your shirt. All good. Rash guards, hoodies, patches, beanies are either on there or they're like literally on the way. (laughs) The wheels are in motion, man. 
Check. I can't stop it. Can't stop it right now. Um, a lot of cool stuff on there. Stickers, some decals on there. It's good. Anyway, you don't have to get something, but go on there. Check it out. If you like something, get something. Really good way to support. Also, for workout gear, equipment, you want to introduce some variety in movements in your workout, good place to go. Kettlebells, battle ropes, maces. Go to onit.com slash Jocko. I once said, well, actually more than once said that Jocko's workouts are boring. They're not. I get it. They're not boring. I re- retract that statement. They're not boring. But if you run the risk of your workouts being boring, just get some new equipment. Actually, it's good because you know when you get new equipment, like get even like something as simple as a jump rope, right when you get it, it kind of rejuvenates a little party. You want to, you know, it's like when you get a new gi, you want to go to practice more, you know. You buy some new running shoes, like you're kind of compelled to go running. So you're basically still a (laughs) (laughs) five-year-old. Whatever we kind of all are in a way. And if you go to onit.com, get you some new fitness gear, it'll introduce a little variety to your workout, different gear, different movement, different workout, keep you on the path even more and make it interesting. Make it fun, man. I think. That's my opinion. Anyway, onit.com slash Jocko. Good spot. Good way to support. Also... When you're buying any of the books that we review on this podcast, don't worry. I organized them on our website, chalkpodcast.com, in the books section. Just click through there, get the books through there. And if you're doing any other shopping, hey, carry on. Do your shopping. Good way to support. Also, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and any podcast app that you might use. A lot of new apps, by the way doing podcasts um yeah subscribe good way good way to support also we have a youtube channel if you are interested in the video version of this podcast subscribe to youtube channel there's some excerpts on there along with the video version and enhanced excerpts it's good deliver the message with some i don't know some cool music or something anyway shareable stuff like so you don't have to share a two three hour podcast with someone and then you know when you get something in your message or inbox or whatever and it's two hours long you're not watching it straight up in fact i would say even right when you press press play before you even get to like five seconds in you check see how long it is i think that's a normal protocol that is a normal protocol you see two hours you're clicking right out of there it depends on what it is it depends on what it is and depends but there's not too often that you just got a two hour block thrown you know sitting the sitting aside randomly like, oh, randomly somebody sent me a video yeah oh, it's I'll two hours it. long i'll watch it right now yeah. that's not happening yeah it typically doesn't happen like that but three minutes four minutes you yeah be able to hang with that yeah and you might share it with your uh you know your friend um yeah so subscribe youtube channel good way to support also psychological warfare if you don't know what that is this is what it is it's an album with tracks on this album not music tracks it's jocko tracks and these tracks each track is designated engineered if you will to help you me to help me is what it is but it will help you get past little moments of weakness that you might encounter i'm not saying everyone's going to encounter it everyone probably will encounter it but that's not the point here point is if you do encounter it you got something to help you you got jocko to help you that's a good deal you want to skip the workout or something like this you don't feel like working out that's really what it is you don't feel like working out the comfort of not working out is 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 distracting you is what it is but it's it seems more uh appealing than the discomfort of working out it's what it is and then you listen to a track there's a certain track for that Jocko explains to you why you shouldn't miss a workout. Boom. Part through the workout, you're good. And for every little weakness that you might come across, there's a track for it. It's all good. Just check it out and think like, dang, is that one of my weaknesses? Boom. Just get it. You're good to go. 100% success rate in my experience. Cool. Also, uh, you can get Jocko white tea, which I'm not even going to say anything else about it because I don't have to. Because this is a drink that guarantees an 8,000 pound deadlift. And so what, what, else, what more else could I say? Regardless of age, everyone should know. And you should be careful with that. Because my eight year old daughter, she drank some Jocko White tea. Eight thousand pounds. <laughs> DL. Get some. Dang. All right, books. Way of the Warrior Kid. You probably already read the first Way of the Warrior Kid book. If you haven't, you can get that right now. Uh you can also get Way of the Warrior Kid two, which you have not read yet. It's called the Mark's Mission. 
you haven't read it yet because it comes out April 24th. It has more lessons. Life lessons, how to be a better human being. How's that for a good subtitle? How to be a better human being. By the way, my nephew, my actual nephew, sure. he likes book two better. He liked book one. He likes book two better. Thanks. Judge for yourself. Pre-order it now wherever books are sold so that it will be at your door on April 24th when it comes out. And on top of that, when you buy this book, you're helping another kid see this book. I, I, if that, does that make sense? Yes. Like when you buy this book, someone else is going to see it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to elevate it. And other people are gonna see it we're trying to spread the word so the more we sell out of the gate the more kids are gonna hear about this book and the first book so get a copy for your kids your neighbor kids your classroom at school the library get as many copies as you can because we're gonna help out a lot of kids get their lives on the path with this book if you don't believe me check out Aiden he's a warrior kid 12 years old own business you can get his soap Jocko soap from Irish Oaks ranch.com so you can stay clean which is important also don't forget about discipline equals freedom field manual the manual for getting after it which is what you should do it's what we should all do how do you do it though that's the question and the answer is in the field manual discipline equals freedom field manual if you want the audio version it's not on audible it's on Amazon music Google Play other mp3 platforms also extreme ownership combat leadership applied to the battlefield to business and to life number one New York Times bestseller number one Wall Street Journal bestseller Amazon bestseller number one why because it works read it and right now you can also order the follow-on book to extreme ownership it's called the dichotomy of leadership you heard me talk a little bit about dichotomy today and in this book Leif and I go into the granular principles and examples from the battlefield and from business that will make you a better leader and a better person. All those little scenarios we talked about today, if you read them and understand them, you'll be ready for you when you get punched in the face with them. So pre-order that book now, or you're going to have to wait. That's what happens. If you don't pre-order, the book comes out and you don't get your copy. Because you hesitated. Don't hesitate. That book comes out September 25th. And if you need intrusive leadership training with your team, then you need Echelon Front, my leadership consulting company. It's me, Leif Babin, JP Dinell, Dave Burke. Info at echelonfront.com. Or you can just visit the website, echelonfront.com. We solve problems through leadership. That's all. And of course, there's the muster, which is our leadership seminar. We're only doing two years, two of these this year, one in Washington, D.C., May 17th and 18th, one in San Francisco, October 17th and 18th. These events are well on their way to being sold out. That's all there is to it. There's not going to be any other musters this year. Come to one of these. We will be there. We will not be hiding backstage. We will be out front with you. Join us there, register at extremeownership.com. Also, there is Roll Call 001 happening September 21st in Dallas, Texas. This is for current military, law enforcement, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders. We appreciate what it is that you all do every day, and we want to help you do it even better. So, one day leadership seminar about leading in a dynamic environment. You can sign up for that at extremeownership.com as well. And until we do see you at the muster or at the roll call, if there's some reason that you want to continue this conversation with us, you can find us on the interwebs, at Twitter, on Instagram, and inside the Feishi Boha. This, you will find Echo, who is at Echo Charles, And I am at Jocko Willink. And thanks to all the military folks that are out there tonight at some forgotten barricade. Waiting and ready for whatever comes into the police and law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs, and other first responders who are here on the home front also waiting and also ready for whatever comes. Thanks to all of you and to everyone else that is out there listening but not just listening more important watching 
watching yourself observing yourself looking to see what you can do better and where you can be better so that you can become better keep yourself in check hold the line and get after it so until next time this is echo and jocko out